Good morning, family of God. How many will agree with me that there's never a dull moment when you're serving the Lord? Even in the down times, our lives are exciting. There's always something going on. God's hand never stops. Thank the Lord, because I tell you what, when I feel like I can't do anything, God is still working. He works, he works, and he's working in all of our lives. And we have each other. We're all one big family. We're not alone. We're doing life together, saints. We're doing life together. So as brothers and sisters of the Lord, we always have an opportunity to lift each other up, encourage each other, and stand with each other when we feel like that we're weak and we can't do it all ourselves. So let's lift up our brothers and sisters on this list, knowing that the prayers are already answered. Amen. So we're just thanking you, Lord, today. We're thanking you for you, your love, and your mercy endures forever, Lord. We're just so thankful for our brothers and sisters that we're lifting up right now. Lord, we're lifting up for continued prayer and healing in the name of Jesus for Mary, Stephanie, Cece, Tatiana, Samantha, Miguel, and Ed. Prayer for healing from cancer for Corey and Lena. Prayer for surgery and recovers for Nyla, Maria, Eileen. We thank you, Lord, this day. We thank you. We're thanking you, Lord, for the rain. For, Lord, sometimes when our lives are like a desert, Lord, you rain your love upon us, Lord, consistently, Lord. And we're just so thankful that today, Lord, that you're raining down your blessings upon us, Lord. Lord, sometimes our words may go up crooked to you, but, Lord, your blessings come down straight. So we're so thankful for your blessings that keep and they continue to fall down upon us, Lord, because of your merciful hand, your merciful, unending love, Lord. So today, Lord, we're giving you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? <laughs> it's a little gloomy and rainy out. <laughs> That's okay. We still get to come out, right, and praise Jesus together. Amen? <clears throat> well, why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet this morning? And just give God a shout of praise and thanks this morning. Amen? Yeah. He is so good. He is so faithful.
You do. You make. 
Shit. 
You don't know how much it means to me, says the Lord. You don't know much, how much it means to me that you praise me, says the Lord. Because you're always royalty to me. You're always royalty, says the Lord. And you may feel today that you're exhausted or you're tired of running. You're tired, says the Lord. But you're always with me. You're always positioned as royalty. You're always my bride, no matter what, says the Lord. And the Lord will say to you today, praise. Praise just lifts up the things of heaven. Praise brings forth angelic beings. Praise moves mountains, says the Lord. Praise moves my hand. And so I say to you today, you're always in white. You're always royalty. You're always loved, says the Lord. Shout your praise Our hearts will cry These bones will sing Great are you, Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our
Thank you, Jesus. God is so amazing. And to have the opportunity and the privilege to be in relationship with God all because of Jesus, which amazes me to no end. It's still knowing in my heart that I don't deserve anything that God wants to give me, yet he sent Jesus. And so the outgrowth of our gratitude can be seen in our worship, in our praise. The psalmist wrote it this way in Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lambs. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So I want to go back into this, this worship song and, uh, and I want you to just, however you feel to express your worship, your unique sound, because that's really what worship is. We come together corporately and we create an orchestra or a symphony of sound blending together, rising up to the throne of God. But you individually make a very unique sound. And so I want you to offer your sound today as we blend together in a symphony of praise. Amen. Go ahead, Nicole. Just lead us back into that song. offer up your praise however you feel led to do that some of you just might sing the name Jesus and that's worship but whatever's on your heart come on make your sound offer your unique praise thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord God you are worthy of all that we are all of our praises.
Thank you, Jesus. You know, when, when the Lord mentors us in worship, it's something you take with you. You don't leave it here. And so I want to encourage you to begin to practice your worship expression. When you're driving in the car, when you're in the shower, when you're just sitting wherever, you know, you can hum in your spirit. You can, you can begin to visualize the greatness of God, the beauty of the Lord, and put some words to that. And begin to sing your expression. Guys, you were created to worship God. And so I want to really encourage you that when we come together, these are all teaching and learning moments. And so take it with you. One of the things you can begin to practice is, is writing some things down, maybe on the notes portion of your smartphone. You, you get a vision from the Lord or a word from the Lord. You just put that down. And then you can worship with that later in the day. You can prayerfully. Do you know all the psalms that were written, all the beautiful psalms that were written in the Bible, were all written to be sung? Isn't that amazing? They're songs for the Lord. And common folk like you and I pen them to sing out to God. Well, don't let your song be left unwritten. Come on, write your song and become one of those who are in the choir of heaven. Amen? Amen. Well, God bless you. Greet somebody near you as we welcome. Well, we're going to take our offering in just a second. Go ahead, but greet somebody near you. And guys, you can be seated. Now, I want to encourage you. Um, part of our worship is, is, is our obedience and giving to bring the tithe into the local storehouse and offerings above and beyond that. Now, there's ways to do that. You can do that digitally, guys, and guys that are watching by live stream. I would imagine a lot more are watching by live stream in the comfort and the dryness of your own home. Um, we are catching uh, a little bit of the left side of, of uh, a hurricane, but it's, it's just rain. Henri. Henri. Uh, Henri. Okay. It's Henri. <laughs> Don't let Henri keep you home. There's still time to get here, I'm just saying. But, <laughs> but if you're going to check in with us from the live stream, we welcome you. And we're here to serve you as well. We want to be a blessing in your life. But there are three ways to give digitally. You can do it by text. The information is there. Uh, there is uh, the number and uh, text CTNJ and then... You can follow the prompts on that. Also, you can go to our website at ctnj.org, and you can select Give, or you can install our church app. app, app store. Store. I, would I would encourage you to, you to do that. that. This, this way, way you can keep, keep updated, updated on all that's going, going on and, and, and uh, all the activities and things, things that, that we provide for you and for, for your growth, growth in, in Bible study and in worship experiences and in, and in fellowship, fellowship, which, which is, is really, really important. important. And, and so you can do that. You can go to the App Store and look for CTNJ. And download, download that, and, and you can give there, there as well. well. But, but if, if you're here, here and, and prepared to give physically, and you have your offering with you, as, as you exit, exit to the right, the double doors on the right, there is a basket there with an usher, and, and you, you can deposit your, your offering there as you exit today. But let's pray and thank, and thank God, God for his faithfulness. faithfulness. Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you are forever faithful, God. You meet all our need according to your riches and glory. We pray. That, that the blessing of worship, of worship and, and obedience in the tithe and the offering would, would glorify your name and advance your kingdom and, and meet the needs of the brokenhearted. God, God, that it would touch all those today that need an expression, expression of love. And we, we ask, ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, Pastor Connie, come, Connie, come on, on and give us our announcements. announcements. Yay, good, good morning. morning. Is the sun shining in our hearts today? <laughs> um, I want to take this time to welcome anybody. If you're here for the first time, if you could please raise your hand. Yay, our homecomers. 
everyone that are here today. Thank you, Jesus. We're so excited to have you here. Um, our ushers are going to give you some information about the church so you can just see what we're all about. And if you ever need anything, you can call, uh, call us at 908-709-9600. We're open from Tuesdays to Thursdays, 9 to 3. And you can also, with the, and we have our emergency phone, so you can always get in touch with us. You can also check us out at ctnj.org. So thank you so much for visiting with us today. Uh, we're going to do the announcements. Prayer Wednesday, Wednesday nights from 7 to 8, we're meeting in the kids' church area. So please join us. You, you want to use the ministry entrance, 69B, and it's the second door. So please join us as we lift our prayers up to the Lord. A lot of prayers need to be ministered to these coming days. And I just pray that we're continually praying for our country and the Christians that are in Afghanistan. And we're just going to pray for God's protection and our servicemen who did serve there and have served there. So let's, let's remember, remember them, them in our prayers. prayers. Also, Tuesday and Wednesday night, Mantle of Power is going to be hosting Andre Van Zeel. And he is a wonderful, wonderful man. He's a friend of ours. He's a great prophet. So if you want to hear, I remember when he taught us about dirt. And um, it was a good teaching. So you don't want to miss it. So he's going to be in the great room both Tuesday and Wednesday night from at 7.30. So, so please, please join us for that. Brief share will we'll be starting September 8th through December 1st on Wednesday nights from 7 to 8.30 in Conference Room, room A. If, if you've lost, lost someone that's, that's close to you, a loved one, a family, friend, and you really need some help to get past when, when you're in grief, this, this is the place to go because you'll be able to share with one another because um, you're all, they're, they're all going through the same thing. thing. And, and God, God called for us to be together to carry each other's burdens. So that's, that's going to start September 8th. The registration is $15 for the book. And, and if you have um, um, any, any other questions, you can check at the information desk. Starting Sunday, September 12th, new believers. We're, we're so, so excited, excited to, to be getting, getting back to the schedule. And if you've been in our church for less than a year and you're a new believer, this is a great way for you to be able to learn really deep, um, just basics to learn about when you're a new Christian and everything. And elders do teach this class, so you don't want to miss it. It's going to begin September 12th, 9 o'clock at Conference Room A. And it's off that um, hallway, off the cafe. So please... You need to sign up because we do have a book for you, but we're looking really forward to having that. Uh, the next one, Return of the Coffee and Donuts has gone on vacation. So, <laughs> no coffee and donuts. Pinhose is closed. They need a vacation for the next two weeks. So, you can, all, but you can still get coffee out in the back, and I think tea is out there and everything. So we will be back to coffee and donuts come September. So be ready. I think that's the announcement. I think we want to call up Victor and him. Okay, no, they're not here. Okay, good. So if we could call up, we'll pray for them from here. Thank you, Jesus. I want to call up Michelle. And uh, uh, Tony and Lorena, today is Mission Sunday, so we're so excited about what God is doing, and I'm coming down here. And Michelle, you know, again, we are very mission-minded, and we are seeing God doing great things. So Michelle's going to give us an update on one of our missionaries. Thank you, church family. Welcome. Um, thank you for giving me this time to uh, update you on our missionaries in Germany, uh, Ben and Sarah, uh, Sarah Carey. Um, this young couple has been in Germany for 14 years now and in their current location, which is Warren, uh, Germany, for nine years. Uh, they've been blessed with four children. Their names are Travis, Hannah, Emma, and Leah. Um, for a, a, a quick update on what's been going on over there, um, they've, they've been in um, 
various English ministries for several years. Uh, Sarah, Sarah averages about 12 children and then about 12 adults. Um, from, from that, that was birthed birth the ministry of, uh, of the English, English Day, Day Camp. camp. Uh, and before, before COVID, COVID uh, there, there were up upwards of 60, 60 children, children uh, att in attendance. So, so that, that was that was such a blessing. blessing. Um, so so uh, you, you may, may remember, remember that, that uh, Pastor, Pastor Honey and Sally DeCoco, DeCoco and Barbara Monday, who's Sarah's, Sarah's um, mother, uh, went, went to Germany, Germany as well as, as Jen Del Delgado and Nicole Lopez and Eric uh, Huni. Um, this is always an energetic uh, young group, as I've uh, read the updates from Sarah and Ben. Um, both of these activities afford the carries the opportunity to share the uh, love of Christ. Um, I just received an update last week. Sarah has restarted the English Hour for the kids, which is really cool. She's quite excited. Um, she's already had 33 children there. Um, we're pr they're praying and trusting that the English activities will continue to bridge the building and connection points in the community, which, you know, is, is sometimes very hard ground, um, and pointing people to the church that they are planting. Um, they, they always pronounce God is good. Um, currently, Ben and Sarah have reopened brunch church services on Sundays, and they have five families, which equals about 20 people. Um, ben and Sarah are always asking for our prayers. They, they covet our prayers. So I want to encourage you and um, our missionaries to remind you, get 100% of what, we, what you give. There is nothing that's held back. Every cent goes to them being able to plant and plow and do everything that God has called them to do. So Project Hope's desire is to be able to meet their physical needs at a moment's notice. It just boom, in the bank, there it goes, and it's done, and they're, they're covered. So this can happen um, when you give and when you stay true to your giving commitment. So thank, thank you, you for the few minutes, minutes that, that you've given, given me. me. God, God bless. Amen. And just a reminder, they are in East, what, what used to be East Village, East Village Church, 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 and there is no, for 50 years while they were in communism, there was nothing about God. There was no churches. So they are really plowing in a very rocky and hard soil. So know of what they're doing. We've been to the camp, and it's amazing the work that they're doing there. Now we're going to have Tony and Lorena to give an update on the Ortiz. Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. And, uh, uh, Pastor Ortiz and uh, uh, Pastor uh, Elena, who is uh, Pastor Ortiz's uh, uh, wife, um, uh, they're very grateful uh, for your uh, prayers and support. Um, and also, um, we got in touch with them of what are the, uh, the updates. And um, basically, is um, Pastor Ortiz is constantly at doing the Yes, yes, he's, he's, uh, uh, he's spreading the gospel anywhere he goes. Um, if, if you want to um, just follow what he does, you can go to Facebook and just type Jaime Ortiz, which is J-A-I-M-E Ortiz, O-R-T-I-Z, right? So uh, just lately, uh, um, I saw uh, Pastor Ortiz uh, uh, preaching right in uh, Elizabeth in um the corner of uh, uh, Jersey uh, Street and uh, in, in, in Broad Street, right there, with the Bible in hand, just calling anybody that is willing to uh, listen. Um, so uh, just before that post, he was right in Broadway, you know, right in Manhattan, New York City. So whenever he goes, he's always preaching. It might be, you know, around here or in the Amazon and uh, anywhere he goes. So um, if you're interested, please follow, uh, and you will see what he does. He is uh, a, you know, a disciple of God. He's always uh, doing uh, a God's work. Uh, for the updates, um, he is, uh, a, they, are, they, they are planning to um, a, this uh, a, a Christmas party for the, uh, for the children. It's called uh, a Thousand uh, a Kids for, for God's, oh, right. So um, the cost of um, a gift for each uh, child is uh, $3. Okay. 
Okay, so I, I know it used to be like one dollar, but things are gone up. I mean, everything is going up, right? So anyway, still three dollars is, well, you know, just go to a McDonald's and get, you know, <laughs> a three dollar sandwich. So, but imagine how much you can bless with three dollars. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, in two weeks, they are going to uh, Colombia. So uh, he's, like I'd say, he's not just, uh, his ministry is not just limited to uh, a Peru or, or in, and how many of you know the Amazon River connects many countries in Latin America, Peru, uh, Brazil, Colombia, and even Ecuador. Anyway, uh, he's, uh, a, he's, he's planning, planning to go, go to, to Colombia. Colombia and, uh, and, uh, he's, he's also, also uh, got, got other uh, ministries. So, so he is, is the, the kind of person that wherever, wherever he goes, if he finds somebody, somebody right, and he, he uh, grows grow those leaders and to be, you know, future pastors and, and, and guys of those uh, 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 towns and cities. So uh, I don't want to take too long, but how many of you know that you have your guidance right <laughs> next to you? <laughs> anyway, so um, I just want to be brief, and uh, this is why we are, uh, that's what my wife said, this is why we are uh, supporting Pastor Ortiz. He is a um, um, disciple. He is bringing not just the gospel, but also help um, to children, uh, the elderly. Uh, I, I, I also know that I, you probably uh, know of the uh, leprosy village that he's also helping, you know, right in the, in the, in the heart of the Amazon River. It's uh, a place on where, you know, you, nobody really wants to go there. So uh, think about it. You know, the leprosy uh, village is, is, a, is a community that is very uh, secluded and really nobody wants to go there. But he's got the heart to go there every year. And, you know, they are waiting for him. So um, once again, please keep Pastor Ortiz and Pastor Elena in your uh, prayers. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And, and Pastor Clem has been, been there in the call. Several, several people, people have been, been to Peru. Peru. And, and believe, believe it or not, before COVID, we were planning on hoping on going there. there. So I also, also want to let you know that we will be giving you more information about the Christmas gifts program because we really, really want to do that and bless them. them. So, so again, again, know that, that what, what we're, we're doing is, is you can outreach to the world and see the fruits of your labor. It's always about where you're sowing your seed. And Pastor Clem is always teaching about that. And when you sow into Project Hope, you're sowing seed into very fertile ground. And we're seeing great and mighty things happen. So with that, I'm so excited with Mission Sunday today that we have the Walter, uh, the Hoving Home from New York Garrison, New York, and they're going to come up now and just bless us. We're so blessed that they're here today. So, a man, Liz, okay, here she is, and um, welcome them. Thank you so much. Um, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. I'll try to carry that like this, and I'm going to set some of my things down. Thank you so much for allowing me to be with you today. Um, my, my, I call them my girls which is odd because we're all about the same age. Um, but they're my sisters in Christ, and I'm so pleased to be here with you and with them. Thank you for having us. Your generosity blesses us. And so I bring greetings to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, before I tell you a little bit about who we are, um, I'd like to let you know that we have a couple of things available for you. You may have received one when you came in, and this is a pamphlet that tells you a little bit about Hoving Home. And in the back is a coupon that allows you to introduce yourself to us. And in exchange for your um, name and your contact information, we will keep you updated with what God is doing at Hoving Home. And we would also love to give you uh, the book named One Lady at a Time. Um, which was written by our founder, John Benton. If you've never read this book, I would encourage you to do so. It will light you up for evangelism. Whether or not you are called to stand on a street and bring people to Jesus, or if God wants to build inside of you the capacity to give greater so that people who are called to do that can, this book is a tremendous tool to do that. Um, how many of you know about Hoving Home? I know that we 
we're like family to you guys. You guys are like family to us. So I would imagine, imagine that, that you, you know quite, quite a, bit a bit about us. us. For, For those, those of you who didn't, didn't raise your hand, hand I'll, I'll do a brief introduction this morning to you. Uh, my, my name is Liz, Liz and, and I, I have the, the joy of being called by the Lord to serve as the director at the New York campus. God brought me out in January from Arizona, and um, I came out in what they say was one of the worst winters in about five years. Um, it was so new to me that I loved it. The snow was gorgeous, and I wasn't mad a bit. So praise the Lord for that. Um, so jail, hospital, or death, um, these are the three endings most associated with addiction. But at Hoving Home, we believe, in fact, uh, we know, and truthfully, we are evidence that another ending is possible. Praise God. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 1 through 5 talks about our past lives, how we once lived according to the darkness of this age, but then as we get down to, to the end of that passage, it goes, but God. But God. What a powerful, powerful reminder that God, when he enters into a life, when a life begins to open up to him, changes things dramatically. Amen. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his Great love with which he has loved us. Aren't you glad to be loved by God? Hallelujah. Even when we were dead in trespasses and in sins, has made us alive together with Christ. There's something powerful about being alive, but there's something magnificent about being alive with Christ. Hallelujah. For it is by grace you have been saved. Praise the Lord. So, so at Holy Home, home we, we provide hope through, through a loving, loving community devoted to rebuilding and empowering women um, to have the life for which they were destined at the time of their conception. We believe that God has given them a purpose. And it is through an individualized Christian discipleship and career-focused curriculum that we... Um, that, that we, we win them over to fall in love, love with Jesus and, and give a sense of family where it's safe to begin to change, to let, let your walls down and be transformed. Since 1967, over 26,000 women have entered our doors. And we have four campuses, five programs, so... We didn't, we didn't see all of these women in, in one, one location, location, but over um, our, our campuses in uh, New Jersey, New York, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Pasadena, California, we have seen women be transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. Um, we also have made a strategic decision to remain privately funded. Uh, as you know, the government does offer... Um, some funds to faith-based programs to a faith initiative, but what that means is if you accept those funds that you can no longer stay true to the gospel, which says Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through him. And so at Holding Home, we've, uh, we've drawn a line in the sand, we've made our decision, and we will remain faithful to the gospel. And so we've chosen to stay privately funded it is, it is through your generosity that, that we can continue with this, this message of the gospel in the lives of women. women. Um, our, our country really is experiencing one of the worst drug epidemics that it has ever seen, that has ever been recorded, and overdoses is the number one killer of Americans under the age of 50. You may have heard that statistic, and um, it, really is, it really is heartbreaking to realize that over 81,000 drug overdose deaths occurred uh, in the 12 months ending in May 2020. And we're starting to get the numbers for overdoses that um, happened during the isolation of the pandemic. And um, as those numbers come out, it, it really is sobering to realize how the enemy has used um, something like a pandemic where people are 
isolating to stay safe and to try to stay alive to really attack the hearts and minds of those that are that um, have addiction in their past. So um, we're looking at about a 38% increase in overdose deaths over the COVID-19 pandemic. When you pray, please remember to pray for those who struggle with addiction. When they um, are separated from their support systems, the power of darkness really does uh, attack the mind. And we know that we know that God's greater. We know that the power of the Holy Spirit is greater. And so, um, would you pray with us about that? Uh, Healthy Home, our discipleship program is a multi-phase, multi-year process. And when we start with compassionate care. This is 30 days where we give a woman a place to sleep, eat, know that she doesn't have to take care of anybody in order to be safe or taken care of. She can come in knowing she's safe. And in that 30 days, we really, we really love on her. We call it compassionate care. And in this 30 days, a woman's desire to change begins to blossom, begins to show up. And at, at around the end of that 30 days, uh, we meet with her and invite her into what we call laying the foundation. And this is where a lady's desire to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ really begins to shine through biblical discipleship. And um, it's the heart transformation that makes the difference in a life. And so this is where we really fertilize the, the, the good soil and the seed of the word that has been deposited into them. After that, the third phase would be preparing for the future. We focus on career readiness. Um, our education center, our computer lab is absolutely gorgeous. It is um, it's new to us, and so we are so proud of everyone who helped us get those doors open. And, um, and this is where the desire to learn really begins to shine in our students. Um, and then, then we, we have day 366 and beyond. And this is where a woman has completed her one-year time uh, programming with us. And she's, she's uh, done her completion ceremony. We celebrated her work. And then she goes to, um, to live a successful life. And we ask for her to have an overcoming Christian testimony for six months. Once, Once she does, does that, then she, she can uh, come, come back and graduate, and, and we celebrate um, all that God has been doing in her life. You see, our goal isn't sobriety. We know that sobriety is just a side effect of heart transformation. Heart transformation leads to life transformation, and that is done only through Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that this morning? Hallelujah. We are, we are so thankful that, um, that we have the truth of God's word. Um, this, this morning, we know that um, there are many ways to partner. There are three that I'll highlight for you today. One has already been mentioned, that is pray for us. We, we come from a background where we believe in fasting and prayer. We know that battles are won in time on our knees. So pray for us. If you have a desire to participate, we would welcome you to participate. Volunteer with us. If you need it done at your house, we need it done at our house. And so you would be welcome to come and spend a day with us. We will feed you. We will laugh with you. You can work with us. Amen. And then, of course, your partnership in giving is so important. I know that together, as we, as we band together as the body of Christ, we can see more women set free. More women experience life transformation. More families receive back their grandmother, their mom, their daughter, their granddaughter, their sister, their auntie. We know that those who are lost in addiction were once like us, as Ephesians described, dead in trespasses and sin, but God. And, and we, we get, get to be part, part of that, that but, but God story. story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and you, you do, do too. So this morning, morning would you help welcome our choir as they prepare to come up and bless you with their singing and their testimony? Praise God. We stand on the truth found in Revelation 12, 11 that says, And they overcame him, meaning the enemy, 
by one the blood of the lamb and two the word of their testimony these women are overcomers today so as they sing their testimony as they speak their testimony encourage them and be encouraged yourself they are overcomers and so are you thank you jesus amen younger sisters. Growing, Growing up, up, I was a quiet child. child. I, went I went to school. I was, I was involved in such activities as Girl Scouts, volunteering at our local hospital, hospital gymnastics. I, was, I had a lot of friends, but I was also just as happy to stay home reading and writing. As I grew into my teen years, I started hanging out with a different group of friends. I started dressing differently, going to parties, Smoking, smoking cigarettes, cigarettes, drinking alcohol. alcohol. I, used I used to hitchhike, hitchhike to, get to get to wherever I needed to go. go. And going, going out with older guys got me into bars and clubs and other situations that I shouldn't have been in. Uh, fast, fast forward a couple, couple decades, decades later, I'm now married with a 25-year-old son. And my, and my drinking has progressed to the point of um, many, many car accidents, broken, broken bones, hospital visits, visits drinking on the job, getting fired from jobs. And creating situations of infidelity in my marriage. I lost the trust, respect, and love of my family. In order to appease everyone, there were 
detoxes, uh, rehab visits, 12-step programs, uh, intensive outpatient programs, partial hospitalization programs, and numerous counseling and psychiatrist visits. Every so often I gain a couple of months of sobriety, once even three years here and there, but eventually I gave in to my desire to drink. Finally, in February of 2020, after losing yet another job, some family, I live in Florida now, so some family from back up north here uh, called me to confront me about my drinking and offered to help me get help, and I agreed to that, came back up north. But for some reason, all of the secular options that they had looked into for me didn't pan out. So somebody had told my dad's family about the uh, Hobie home. And I knew it was a faith-based program, so I was a bit skeptical. I looked into it, and I just figured that nothing else had worked after all these years, so I decided to give it a try. But I said, if it was going to be a bunch of crazy Jesus freaks, I was out of there. <laughs> they weren't crazy. I entered the Hobie home, home in February of 2020 in the New Jersey home, and I was greeted by a loving, warm, caring staff and group of ladies, given a Bible. I dove into my studies at the Benton Academy, and I began to start my relationship with the Lord. I had signed up for the six-month program, and as the program was coming to an end, um, I was approached by the staff about signing on for the full-year program, and I felt a tugging inside me telling me that that was the way to go. Uh, my family even asked me if I was ready to leave. And since restoration had begun, I was excited to go back to Florida and be with my husband and son. Uh, so I did leave on August 9th, and I relapsed almost immediately. So I was back on the phone with the Hobing Home, and by the grace of God, I was allowed to return on September 19th of 2020, about a month and a half later. And since then, I've started rebuilding my relationship with God, or trying to get back into where I left off there. I'm taking my time now. I'm not making grandiose plans for the future. Um, restoration has once again begun in my family, so I'm just going to be still and listen to what the Lord has for me. So the verse that I leave you with is Psalm 71, 20 through 21. Though you've made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. Thank you.
see Victor and Kim. God bless you guys. But we want to pray for you. And I'm just going to share a brief word. We're not going to go to the PowerPoint. I'm going to kind of uh, go in a different direction. And um, But guys, come on up here. Um, John and Michelle, come on up as well. Connie, come, where's Connie? She's disappeared on me. She's, she's taking care of business. She's always taking care of business. God bless you guys. We want to pray for you. We know you're moving, going to Florida. This is really, um, it, it gets a little emotional, doesn't it? <laughs> we love you guys. And uh, the brief time we've had together, we just want you to know that we're here for you for the duration, for the long haul. So we want to pray for you. Uh, any of the leaders that are here want to come up and come on and surround them? That would be great. Patrick, come on up. Join me, Jackie, Pastor Jackie. Praise God. Yeah, Michelle, that's awesome. You guys, your family, right? Okay. So if you need anything, please, we will do whatever we can because we're your support team. We believe in you, and we know this is a new season. So we just want to pray into your lives. So, Father, we thank you for both Victor and Kim, God. We thank you, Lord, that you saw fit to turn uh, the page God, and to give them a, a, a brand new chapter in their lives, God, that you will fill, God. This is the chapter in which they follow you wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly, God. This is the chapter that will cause them to have the transformation they've been crying for. And so, Father, we recognize the field you're sowing them into, God has something for them that you have already planted. So we pray, God, as they move into their new season of blessing, that you will encourage their hearts and let them get deeply rooted in Christ. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. Guys, I'm going to share a couple of scripture verses, one from Luke chapter 4, and then one from uh, Isaiah 61. And I guess you're familiar with the portion of scripture where Jesus in uh, Luke chapter 4, he is handed, this is the beginning of his ministry, he's handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. He's in the temple now on the Sabbath, and uh, it's amazing how Jesus begins to read about himself. And then he tells them, after quoting the scripture, that today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And then I'm going to go back to the actual text of what Jesus was referencing or what he was reading from, from the book of Isaiah, which comes from chapter 61. And I'm so inspired by you ladies. Uh, you guys are courageous. You are heroes. And uh, we just, we applaud you. God bless you. <laughs> So it says here in verse 16, so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, here it is, verses 18 and 19, so important. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, when he makes this statement, when he's talking about himself in the fulfillment of the prophetic word of Isaiah from chapter 61, he's talking about everyone that does not have God is spiritually bankrupt and poor. Amen. He's not talking about just an economic position. He's talking about those who were created by the very hand of God with a purpose, with a design. Even scripture tells us that before we were planted or developed or growing in our mother's womb, God had written your story. Amen. He had written your story. So he says the spirit of God now is upon him and he has a message to bring to preach the gospel to the poor. He goes on to say, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. 
Now, I don't know about you, but that's a comforting word. Because I don't care whoever you are and whatever position you find yourself in life, at least you have had your heart broken once. Now, in reality, many of us, our hearts have been broken many times. Disappointed, let down, rejected. But God came to mend all that, to take the broken pieces, which seemingly are jagged edged and fragmented, and to put them back together in a design and a format that speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I look at you ladies today and I recognize that God has taken the pieces that have been scattered throughout your history and he's putting them back together. And he's mending and he's molding and he's shaping. And the Bible tells us that he's the potter, right? And we are the clay. And when you submit to the hands of the potter, as he puts his hands into your life and begins to apply shaping pressure. I don't know if you've ever worked uh, on a potter's wheel. It is, uh, it is a very unique experience. I've done that before. And I want to tell you, it is, it, it's, it's, it's a God experience. To put your hands into clay. And to begin to apply pressure, balance pressure, and to make out of it something that is beautiful, something that is a work of art. You are beautiful and you are a work of art. You are shaped by the hand of God. God not only came to give you the rich blessings in which he paid for at the cross of Calvary, but he also came to heal your brokenness. And you sung about that. You're experiencing that. You guys are actually living it. And I want to thank you for that because you're an encouragement to us. He was sent to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And as I said earlier, he went on to say, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing and so when the prophets prophesied in the Old Testament about Jesus and about all that he would do, it is so clear here in Isaiah 61, beginning at verse 1, where here's what the prophet Isaiah says, and this is exactly what Jesus went on to fulfill. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That word heal means to bind up. In other words, I talked about that before, to bring all the pieces back together. You know, life, life will try to destroy you. It'll break you. And you are a fragile piece of creative work by the hand of God. And the enemy likes to take a swipe at you. He wants to break you. He wants to cause you to fall to pieces. But the finished work of the cross declares that you are the head and not the tail. Amen. That you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That you are above and not below. That you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That you are the pearl of great price. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, as we proceed now with just a couple more verses, and I'm going to close in prayer. There are ways that God accomplishes this. He accomplishes it through comfort, through consoling, through giving blessings or beauty. And he anoints you with new oil and gives you a new wardrobe. And he gives you a new reputation and a new name. You are no longer bound by the failures of your past. But you are free. And so here's the way it reads. To comfort all who mourn. How many of you have spent sleepless nights crying, at times wailing, 
because you don't have words. Mm -hmm. And everything looks like it will never, ever work in your favor. The anointing of Jesus is to comfort. It goes on to say that he's there to console you, to console those who mourn in Zion and to give them beauty for ashes. Now, the word console here means to appoint. <laughs> God has appointed you for better days and for better things. And when we simply follow him, we, when we close the gap between the appointment of God, when the appointment of God and our response of obedience marry together and become intertwined by the Holy Spirit, we find ourselves in the right place at the right time for the right reasons. And when that happens, everything seems to come together. It doesn't mean everything will be perfect or you won't have opposition. But what it does mean is that your joy will never be robbed. Your purpose will never be taken. And you will know that you are fully accepted in the beloved. The lying attack of the devil no longer works when your obedience matches the appointment of God. When those two are married together, you will be able to stand against the fiery darts of the enemy because you will be clothed and wardrobed in the full armor of God. He'll give you beauty for ashes. There's always, here's a great, God always does this exchange thing. He takes things that are worthless and he exchanges them for beauty. He goes on to say he'll give you the oil of joy for mourning. Now, that picture is, is <laughs> you can begin to understand that it's a way of enhancing your beauty from a long night's sleep. I don't know about you, but when you first wake up, I mean, when your face is mushed in the pillow and you've got lines all across, you know, it, it just look good, right? And so here, God will never leave you looking unkept. And it goes back to the parable of the prodigal. The father ran out to cover his son's shame. God will never let you be shamed. The beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and then he gives you this unbelievable garment called the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And the name exchange, the reputation exchange begins to take place that you may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Now, what does that say? That you're not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are not someone's misery, but you've been planted by God. You have been divinely planted by the very hand of God as his seed on the earth. My God, you have purpose. And the restoration of God that's upon you today is going to bring all of us into a brand new season of understanding while the world is spinning off in chaos right. and uncertainty, we will stand on the rock that is higher than I. That's right. We will stand on the rock, the cornerstone of Jesus Christ, the stone that the builders rejected. Yep. And when our obedience matches his assignment, we will be married to the very purpose of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm going to close there. Ladies, we thank you because you have challenged our faith. Um, and, and I don't know, you might think that we're a blessing to you, but it does not compare to how you bless us. Amen. It just doesn't. 
you are our heroes. You are courageous. We're not only uh, participating with you and, and, and standing with you, uh, but we believe we're family. I see all my beautiful sisters in Christ, and it is a thank you, God, big time. So we praise God for you being here today. And we thank God for everyone that's here and those that are watching by live stream as well. Guys, uh, worship team, come on up. I'm going to close in prayer. Well, praise God. One of the things that we like to do is give an invitation to receive Christ every time we're together. If you're watching by live stream and you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm not asking you to join this church. What I'm asking you to do is to open your heart to Jesus, and Jesus will lead you to the right fellowship. He'll lead you. Remember, you shall be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Once you accept Jesus, then God will take you and plant you where you're supposed to be and where you're supposed to grow. And you'll become part of a community of faith. And while every community of faith is not perfect, we're all growing together, I want to tell you something. You cannot grow outside of community. You can't grow in isolation. We need to grow together. Amen? So if you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord, I want to encourage you. And I'm going to pray a prayer with you. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And those that are here with us today, those that are watching my live stream, I, I would ask that everybody pray this prayer after me. Father God, today is my day. The exchange is taking place. You are giving me beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I thank you for that. Now, Lord, I ask that you come to live inside me. I've experienced you externally, but I need you internally. I want you on the throne of my heart. I want you to lead my life. You are my creator, and today I accept you as Lord and Savior. I turn away from my old life, from my sin, and I receive your gift of eternal life. Now my name is written in the Lamb's book of life and no one can take that away from me. I'm a child of God and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We praise God. Guys, let's stand together as we give a dismissal prayer. And uh, I want to encourage you today, stay dry, stay safe. Amen. Well, Father, we do thank you that you're speaking to our hearts. God, that you love us. God, that we belong to you. And Lord, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. I pray today, God, that we will take one step closer that we will take one step higher. God, that anything that chases us that's not of you will be completely destroyed and done away with. That we might walk in the full blessing of God and agree with the psalmist that said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.